the last time we were in our lost city of Atlantis here, um, the entire city had actually turned into a giant robot and started exiting the sea. <laughs> Guys, I promise, this, this is a very serious story. Um, and in order to um, fight the president of Atlantis, who has turned the city into a giant robot to escape the sea, uh, the Atlantean Rangers, uh, patent pending, definitely not the Power Rangers, um had assembled into their own giant robot to fight it so that's where we're going to uh resume here after we get an introduction of all our characters now i'm seeing a sort of like order based on clockwise of the uh of the squares that aren't me so uh, we're gonna start with uh kelly because it's too late for you to fix it kelly oh shit i was <laughs> clicking on the wrong screen <laughs> all right so um yeah, I recently uh, came up with a new character, uh, an octopus named uh, Ellen Mollusk, because uh, my old character, uh, Smegma Gland, was a huge piece of shit racist. No idea how that happened. Um, but no, Ellen is great. Um, I roam the land helping strangers in need. Uh, my unique talents are my distributed nervous system, which, you know, allows me to, you know, my, my arms react before the, you know, head brain even... Does shit. We got no time for this. Uh, well, yeah, I have something in my inventory. Um, we have no time for it. Never mind. Uh, I'm done. That's me, Ellen Mollusk. Wonderful. All right. So next we'll go with was it? I'm terrible at names. Lucas. Oh, uh, uh, Lucas. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so my character is. I came up with this name. I woke up from like a weird dream one day with this in mind. Uh, Muldus Mulhew. Uh, he is an older man. He is a shoe polish salesman. Uh, he wears a brown linen suit with a white shirt and a sensible haircut. He frowns most of the time. Uh, he has an intimate knowledge of the production and colors of shoe polish. He can tell the difference between any shade of brown and black. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very exciting person. Sounds right. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mal Mal <laughs> oh, God. In my head, All he right. was Australian. I have a voice in my head. It's not Dutch. Don't worry. It's not Dutch. All right. Talk. It's not too late to give your character a Dutch accent as he, you know, points at people and distinguishes the various different shades of brown and black. Please don't. Oh the Dutch goodness. is already a joke of a language. Let's not make it more of one. No, Please don't make me do a type. Dutch accent. <laughs> Imagine a worse it German. Be, it would just be South African. <laughs> <laughs> I could do an all right South African voice. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Nicole, your character. Um, so I, I need to, I definitely have been keeping up for the show, but for our viewers who don't know, did my character get killed off? Uh, I feel like yes it got killed off no. while I was gone. Okay. Can, do you want to update our viewers on what happened there? Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not clear on what happened either. Look, uh, a storyteller doesn't reveal all the secrets and how he makes stuff work. And that's because we're lying most of the time. Um, so Dr. Gill died um but didn't uh before passing on his um his powers to his brother his long lost brother who then abs absconded with a uh another person look words are hard and i've already had two tall boys um uh with another person and then rejected that and so dr gill came back to life and um before running off to try to shill his services in another area, tried to give like a chosen one speech to our last guest. <laughs> so as it stands, he is not in the giant robot. He is shilling his services somewhere in Atlantis. But with the power of rewrites, I'm sure we'll bring him back into the story. Perfect. I can't wait. This does not seem out of place in any comic I've read. This seems totally fine to me. Yeah, like, I mean, like, I still think it's better than Marvel. <laughs> Didn't Spider-Man become like Dr. Octopus at some point and then actually his soul got put into a giant spider or some shit? Like, and these, this is from like the last 20 years or so, so. Yeah, so, so what like, I'm saying is Marvel yeah. should hire me for absurd amounts of money. Because <laughs> yes. I can write bullshit too. Exactly. And finally, um, again, bad with names, please refresh me. I'm gonna... My name? No, yeah. no, 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 no. I, want, I want him to guess. I want him to no, guess. No, no, I'm actually terribly <laughs> sexist. They didn't tell you about this all and I just forget women's names immediately. <laughs> Uh, uh, Josie. Josie, thank you. Um, I don't think I said that actually. I don't think I'm sure someone said has it. said it though, and my brain is just a void of 
terminal alcoholism. So no, they, okay. in, they they introduced us, but that, that was a, we've been doing going for like an hour and a half now. I I get that. Yeah. But uh, why don't you introduce your character for us? All right. So um, I'm Harold Holden. Um, Harold Holderman Holden is a white man with white grey hair, approximately 59 years old, who wears nothing but a black bathing suit. He is constantly moist and occasionally has a barnacle or crab hanging out on his skin. He's always wearing flippers in his inventory. He has a uh, spear fishing gun and um, he doesn't remember much about his past. Some say he looks eerily like the old Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt. He went for a swim one day in the ocean and was never seen again. True story. Um, may I have five minutes to do a wee-wee? You absolutely can. And I oh, can yeah. talk about how I, thing I absolutely fear the ocean. Thank you, Thank you Josie. <laughs> yeah. Thank Here, you. we've got a... I'm got so a annoyed by that. how well Josie's character fits in this setting. Like, <laughs> I <perfectly> <laughs> chose, <laughs> I've chose this incredibly boring character, but I, I'm kind of happy he's in this setting because like, I'm happy to see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm real jealous, Josie. The last time, uh, we cut off our scene as a uh, barrage of missiles was headed towards the uh, the Power Rangers mech, for lack of a better term, I patent pending. Um, and uh, we'll pick up the story right there. When the missiles strike the head of the mech, and there's a massive explosion. And when the smoke clears, you see the lone figure, our last guest, with their chest rent open, with gore spilling out of it. Oh no! I don't remember running, who our last guest was, but yeah, I'm very sad. A running bit is I kill every. I wasn't. Guest I wasn't the there. Fact. To be clear, I, it's not that they were a forgettable person. I'm sure it was a great episode. I I wasn't there. Um, but from the gore, as it drips from the body, two figures spring out like a certain Greek story, although not with blood. Um. And two figures stand up, a Harold Holden and a Muldus Mulhu. I'm, I'm going to fuck up that name a hundred times, I guarantee you. I'm really good at names, I promise. <laughs> no, that's fine. I. It's yeah. a weird name. It's like a fever dream name. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I always appreciate fever dreams. So uh, that's the establishment for you guys getting written into this little story but a little addum before we get going is a little what? dr gill shut up kelly <laughs> um dr gill as they uh attempted to flee the scene they hear they feel a rumbling from the uh the the atlantis mech that they're on right now and they look towards this giant power rangers mech that they have flown before and they almost feel a pang of nostalgia, like they should be on that vessel. And now, from that moment of the missile striking and blowing up the head of the mech, we will begin with, what does Ellen Mollusk think? Now, Ellen Mollusk is just so excited to contribute. Oh yeah, as usual, I can tell you were paying attention, you ADHD man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me. so uh, I, exa <laughs> I examine my surroundings. Of course you do. <laughs> don't worry. At least 60% of this call has ADHD, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Both in that, man. <laughs> uh, so your surroundings are the mech is slouching forward as its central control system has been destroyed by the fact that sure. it has been broken up. Those eight levers that your eight tentacles were on while you, whilst you floated in whatever environment that room had... Uh, even though you push those levers, they no longer respond to your controls. You see a glowing red switch above you in the uh, frontal part of the cockpit. So our mech shut down. Yes. Didn't we punch them the off. fuck out? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, well, good thing you can't. God damn. All right. Uh, like, is there is there some sort of, like, obvious eject button? I mean, you're seeing a glowing red switch. Yeah, but that could be anything. That's a good question. What is it? Only one way to find out, Kelly. And this, Do this it! Is a, this is a glowing red switch I didn't see when I first asked you to describe the cockpit, and you only told me there were four levers. Well, that's because it wasn't glowing red before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Is it one of the four levers, or it's a new switch? It's a new. It's a switch that just started glowing red. I, um, okay. So I use one of my arms to hit the switch. All right. And I use the other seven arms to, like, all simultaneously give the deuce to, like, I don't know, just the, whatever direction the the general the god. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as you flick that switch, you hear a giant pneumatic hiss as the robot begins to disassemble into smaller crafts. Now, to draw in our new players here, Moldus and Harold, feeling fresh into this new environment, what do you guys feel? What, what, what the f you hear explosions and all of a sudden you exist. What, what do you feel in this situation? <laughs> I feel moist. You feel moist. <laughs> understandable, understandable. And I promise you that will come into factors here. Wetter than usual? <laughs> All I know is wet. I don't... Uh, Mul Muldus is confused. He was attending a shoe polish convention in, in the Cairns Convention Center and is uh, baffled. <laughs> he, he is. He has thoughts on the layout. He he has strong feelings on how a convention center would look, and uh, he want, would not have chosen to set it up this way. That's understandable. And I mean, I I, I mean, like the problem with Cairns is that like it's over it's overshadowed by the film festival all the time, so the shoe. Should shoe shining festival uh doesn't really get a whole lot of uh whole lot of prestige uh, just to be clear i'm talking about the uh northern queensland city of Cannes, not not Cannes film no. festival oh, well i mean <laughs> would you guys stop there, copying there is... the french <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> it's, it's there's, there's better people to coffee <laughs> Look, it also probably has film festivals, but uh, yeah, sorry. So we can say that, yeah, the Shoe Polish Festival has overshadowed <laughs> the Cannes Film Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Not related to the famous French Film Festival. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, perfect. Which is real quick, though, but how would you set up a convention center? We have time. Like, go, go, go deep on it. Yeah, we have um, 17 minutes. Go. Uh, uh, look, I... Uh, 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 Climate control. Um, lots of glass. Uh, lots of points of ingress and uh, lots of points of ingress and ingress. Uh, several sets of stairs to allow people up into the auditorium. Uh, I cannot see anything like that in this uh, current environment. Uh, and I'm and I cannot see where all the shoe polish booths are. I have a lot I'm of feeling, business to do I'm today. I'm feeling violent towards you, Moldus. <laughs> Can can characters fight? Can PCs fight each other? They absolutely can. Okay, yeah, beautiful. there's no Good. combat built into our rules, but there's been a surprising amount of violence in some of our games. So yeah, I've, I've you... seen I've seen Harold's stats, so I don't know how it's going to work out for old Maldus. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that uh, this is still less violent than the time someone used uh, ice cream scoop to take out someone's eyes. So beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So uh, um, uh, Harold's just here uh, for context. Harold has plus two body and like minus everything else. Ah, yes, a classic. Makes you wonder why they uh, never appeared again after they went to the ocean. The answer is because the ocean is terrifying and we should stay away from it. Because <laughs> uh, he belongs there. <laughs> Harold uh, Holt will be getting getting his own episode if Josie doesn't disband the podcast after this. <laughs> We're just getting started. Uh, so yes, um, as you guys are sort of trying to get your own bearings, though, you guys also hear this pneumatic hiss. And as if you had appeared right where you needed to be, uh, two holes appear in the floor underneath you and drop you guys into your own little cramped, frankly a little too cramped, uh, cockpits that, um, with a mechanical voice, announced that autopilot has been engaged. Autopilot. Mm. Autopilot. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um. All right, and then let's see. The problem is, I was I, I forgot that Doctor Gill needed to be written back in there because I killed him and then unkilled him, but still wrote him out. I'll, so. I'll find my way in. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Um, that's her pickup line. <laughs> I'll find my way in. <laughs> Can someone ask Ryan how he's doing right now? I've been telling uh, her it's inappropriate, but... <laughs> you guys, uh, the three of you, Maldus, Harold, and Ellen, uh, have found themselves in some small pilotable crafts that eject from the 
giant robot and make their way towards the Atlantean mech, as I have now decided to call it. Um, on like said autopilot, you uh, you grasp the controls and attempt to direct the craft, but it seems intent on going right after the main platform where the president of Atlantis seems to be standing so far. I do not uh, know what is happening. <laughs> so, well, I mean, but our craft is moving towards this thing on autopilot? Yes. Hey guys, great news. The the thing's doing itself. Let's just let's just see what happens. We'll ride out and see what happens. That's my vote. Also, I pushed one button and this happened. So I don't know. You know this, this is uh, <laughs> I I I don't want to dominate all the all the all the doing stuff. Oh, Moldus Moldus settles down his briefcase and uh, nods. He is baffled, but he is willing to go along with it. I like uh... I like Moldus' style. You hear me flop up in my wet. Uh, swimsuit and my flippers <laughs> and I say what's all this then forgetting that I'm Australian what's all this then <laughs> uh, perfect this gives us an opportunity for our first roll um, Harold if you could re uh, roll 2d6s for your understanding <laughs> uh, I got a 5 and a 1 a 5 and a 1 so 6 minus 1 is 5 so you're vaguely aware that you are in the ocean. That's and uh, you're vaguely aware that you're in the ocean, and that you should keep your flippers on because they might come in handy. Cool. All right. <laughs> That's where you're at I, so far. I, I, I look at my flippers and just give a little little nod at them. <laughs> Perfect. That's all I do. Um. As the, the crafts approach the platform, the Atlantean mech itself doesn't appear to be doing anything to stop your progress. In fact, it seems to have stopped even swimming towards the surface of the ocean and almost seems to be waiting for your crafts to land, which they do with a soft hiss and the pneumatic doors open up, allowing you onto the well-groomed, uh, almost artificial turf surface of the presidential mansion and lawn did you say i run uh no lawn <laughs> lawn oh. Oh, yes okay. yes we're in iran now there's real <laughs> plot twists here i was like what the fuck man <laughs> could could moldus uh try and make sense of his surroundings at all uh can you, he you absolutely can, he... can uh if you could roll two d6s on your understanding uh, uh, yeah you roll those i'm, I'm trusting the honor system here Okay, sorry, uh, that is a six. Uh, a six plus, plus one, so seven. So you, whilst uh, landing on the, the craft, realize that, A, you are way over your head right now. You just wanted to sell some shoe polish. And B, um, whomever is ahead of you there, a well-dressed man with a bald head and a long, bushy beard, is a man of great importance to whatever area you have found yourself in. What 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 kind of shoes is he wearing? He is wearing <laughs> light brown loafers, and due to your um, unique talent, you can tell that they've been polished with a very um, a very rare shoe polish that basically requires a person to be so important that they don't have to ever risk stepping in a puddle. Because what will happen is the shoe polish actually gets very sticky. And can bind if made wet in some way. That's pretty Moldus risky stares. for the president of Atlantis. That you can tell he never has to be amongst the people because I guess, he can yeah. wear a shoe polish like that. Moldus understands immediately that this is an important person if he can afford this particular shoe polish, which is ultra brown, the rarest brown of all. And he is, <laughs> my goodness, sir, why have you called me here today? To die. <laughs> <laughs> you're a rare Sorry, your audio Scottish cut out. Can you just run that line one more time just so we have a clear <laughs> take on it? <laughs> oh, you got it. That feed's coming through just fine, Kelly. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the tall man who Ellen recognizes as the president of Atlantis, even if Harold and Moldus don't, clears his throat. 
and speaks in a gravelly tone. Atlantean Rangers, you have been a thorn in my side since the beginning. You were supposed to be a force that allowed me to control the people, control the chaos, to lower the real estate prices of Atlantean properties so that I could consolidate the property and sell it at a profit to American investors. But you just couldn't stand in line. <laughs> I am going back to my emerald mine. Oh fuck! Off. I'm glad. Sorry. I'm glad we have two Elon Musk shit posters here. So, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to interrupt. We were just supposed to keep talking. So, just to be clear, uh, I, Ellen Mollusk, one of the newest members of the Ranger team, would recognize the president of Atlantis, but not yes. Doctor Millet McGill. Not not Doctor Gillip McGrawfish, who has been around since the beginning. Well, Dr. Um, Gillip has not entered our story yet because Nicole said they would insert themselves. Sorry, I was waiting right. for you to like pivot to me being there. Like to like, hey Nicole, what do you want to do? And then I was gonna... oh, I thought but you that's gonna kick in the door. So Oh yeah. Dr. Gill, now's your chance I, to kick I in kick the door. I kick in the door. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna unzip like the Pepsi Twist commercial and the actual <laughs> the president of Atlantis was gonna be revealed to be Dr. Gill the whole time. Wouldn't that have been a plot twist? I should have went with that. Uh, oh, well. That would have made so much sense. I'm such a monster. God, God damn could, it. Could she be in hiding somewhere in the shadows? Could she about to like ninja flip out? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, uh, Dr. Gill, if you could re uh, roll a uh, body for me. Let's, let's right. find out how well you're hiding in a um, very suspicious bush that seems to be sitting in the middle of the lawn for no reason. Suspicious Bush is the name of my next erotica. <laughs> Kelly, can you roll for me? I did not grab dice because you said you had them. Oh, oh, I'll roll also, for you. Also, I just realized we don't have your dice cam in here, Kelly. Which is <gasps> it's in show. there. I I'm watching with the dice cam user. I guarantee you it's in there. Uh, I can't see it. Well, it's because you got those weird hipster glasses on. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, and now we can see the beautiful Australian flag in the background. Is is that the history flag? No, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely, it might as well be. <laughs> is Basically, it a, the same is it people. A territory flag? Uh, is it a New Zealand flag? Is it's that the definitely a New? It's a New Zealand. Oh uh, wait, wait! Did you flip your fucking dice? I saw that was a goddamn ten. <laughs> you fucking cheater! That was a four. I I had to. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, you rolled a ten. I I I saw the die. So, okay. despite Kelly uh, Kelly's desire to cheat, I was just moving it onto the camera. <laughs> Dr. Gill got a 10, plus I don't actually know what your uh, your body uh, stat uh, is. It's a zero. It's zero? Okay, so yeah. 10. So, whilst talking to the president, the rest of the party can notice a bush comically shifting across the lawn, <laughs> but the president himself doesn't seem to notice. So, uh, Dr. Gill, if you will, you, you are in this suspicious bush, which is the name of my next Grease punk band. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I really wanted to kick in the door, so I'm going to sneak around to anywhere there's a door and kick it in from the other side. That's understandable. So uh, I'm going to say that body roll is good enough that you you slide open a window to the presidential palace. <laughs> you sneak into it, shifting out of the bush as you do so. You work your way open to the front door, and with a loud bang that interrupts the president's frankly self-indulgent monologue, uh... <laughs> The door is kicked open, and Dr. Gil McGrawfish has arrived. How do you wish to introduce yourself? Did someone say exploiting citizens? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Gil. Uh, you may know me from, from the Dr. Gil show. Um, I'm, I'm here, to, here to get my nose into whatever business you're doing. I'm All here right. to Where's get it? real and get my hands dirty. Hey, Dr. Gill, it's great to meet you. Where, where's your accent from? <laughs> it is from the South. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's about accurate to That's fucking... right, South Africa. Yep, 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 definitely. Um, so, now that the president has been interrupted, he seems particularly upset. And he turns around in a start, and... The other three members of the party, Ellen, Maldus, and Harold, this is your opportunity to do something because he is distracted by this, frankly, 
obtuse, old, washed up wannabe psychologist that has stumbled into the plot. I'm I'm hearing old, washed up, and I'm feeling attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, the thing is, washed up is actually a compliment in Atlantis. It's kind of their version of kind of like, <laughs> it, means you're, it means you're an accepted new like, resident. Hey, you're looking you've washed, washed up, up thanks, into dude. town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right then. All right. If if this is an opportunity to like possibly ambush the president, like Moldus probably has an idea of what he could do. Um, mm. uh, I'm not sure how actions work in your system, but uh, he would like to open his briefcase. Uh, take out the can of burnt umber shoe polish and lob it at the president's head. All right. All right. Perfect. So the way we don't have initiative or anything in this system because we want to keep it relatively simple. So I just like, Mm -hmm. if people shout out ideas, I just implement them in the best order possible. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, I'm going to say, as you're unbuckling your briefcase, let's, let's, this gives our other two players on this side of the party an opportunity to do an action as well. Mm-hmm. So, but um, once they've done their actions, I'll get you to roll a body roll to see how well you throw it. Mm-hmm. And we'll go from there. So yes, Ellen and Harold, you see Maldus begin opening his briefcase whilst the president has turned around. Is there anything you want to do in the meantime? Well, Ellen's a bit frozen trying to link the jokes of like suspicious bush and throwing a shoe related object at someone's head. <laughs> so there's a bit um... of like... There's a. Uh, I I feel like uh, Doctor Gill is probably going to have the uh, the initiative here. All right, and Harold, is there uh, anything you want to do whilst uh, waiting for positive. Maldus to open his briefcase? I have a spear gun. So you have a spear gun. That? You absolutely can. I am all for <laughs> ultra violence here. Because <laughs> uh, like I, my understanding is very low, and I'm feeling threatened. Someone just um, what I thought was an insult, um, old and washed up. So I'm just ready for violence. Perfect. Uh, let's. So you're gonna you're gonna take out the spear gun then. Yes. All right. Are you choosing to open fire right now, or are you just gonna yes. hold it? Okay. So, great. I will get you also to roll a body roll then, if you and Maltus could both roll body rolls. So that's just one d six. Two d sixes. Two d sixes. Yeah. Uh, I got a five. You got a five, uh, sorry, all right. Effective six with my body. But... Okay, perfect, uh, perfect. I got seven plus, I think, two. Uh, if I'm yeah, looking at your good. sheet correctly, yep, that's that's two. All right, so um, as Moldus throws the can of shoe polish, uh, Harold opens fire with the spear gun. The shoe polish can is struck by the spear, opening up, <laughs> this, opening up the, the polish, and as the uh, loud clang happens, the president turns around at a start, and his eyes are struck with <laughs> fresh shoe polish, covering uh, his burnt, eyes and blinding him. Uh, burnt umber, that is. Burnt amber shoe polish. Uh, umber. And he umber. is umber. Umber. My apologies. Have you never watched uh, Bob Ross? What is wrong with you? Uh, well, his <laughs> accent. He's got my the, uh, my he's childhood got the grand accent. Of... He pronounces it amber. Uh, no, my, my childhood was lacking joy in every respect, so no Bob Ross alive. Allowed. <laughs> no, same. Um, uh, yeah, imagine having two channels for the first, like, 14 years of your life. It's great. Anyways, uh, the, the brown, uh, the, uh, umber shoe polish blinds the president, and he staggers back, his hands clawing at his eyes, trying to get the shoe polish out of it. He is completely staggered at this point. Now, Dr. Gill, you have no idea what the fuck is going on right now, but you see a a fellow older gentleman in pain and easily taken advantage of. (laughs) What is your plan? Oh, boy. Um, Well, first I look at the shoe polish and I go, damn, is that burnt umber? (laughs) (laughs) The finest burnt umber shoe polish available in Australia. (laughs) <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> mm. Um, and then I um, well, my my instincts to take advantage of anyone that is weakened 
really kick in now. So I, I'm going to try and kick out my leg and trip him All as right, well. So I'll get you a roll body roll there, uh, uh, Dr. Gill. Kelly, Kelly my man. You. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Kelly, have you taken your medication today? Oh, God, it shot off the edge. Okay, wait. <laughs> roll it again. Roll it again. Yeah, so that's a seven uh, plus... You said you had one body, Nicole? It's zero. Zero, so seven. Okay. So you stick out your well-polished shoe-laden foot with a very dark black shoe polish on it and trip mm -hmm. the president who falls flat on his ass and strikes his head on the well-groomed, well-maintained artificial turf that is his lawn and... It causes a cerebral hemorrhage. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And will, with blood leaking out of his eyes and ears, you see him twitch a few times and die. Oh. Wow. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. Do I still get to take an action? You sure do, Kelly. What do you want to do now that you've seen this president die? Well, first, I helpfully point out that well-polished shoe-laden foot is also some erotic I'm working on. <laughs> and, um, oh, no. Ah, so feet man, I see. I managed to very clandestinely, I'm sure no one noticed, uh, quickly look up whether mollusks uh, lay eggs or not. Oh, no. Uh, and they do. Sarah when we need them. So, they do? Yeah. Well, Maybe? Yeah. the... Oh. Very quick Googling says yes. So, yeah, I, I want to attempt to lay an egg. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Does that just happen, or do I have to... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get... Yeah, no, you, uh, you Kelly, you roll a body uh, to see if you can do this. All right. Um, and uh, my... Oh, sweet. So, All right. And the rest of you, are, I'm going to get you guys all to roll a psych roll right now. Do we get to yell, psych? You can if you want. Oh, I am. Yes. Uh, it's the only ooh, way to I'm do it. I'm not going to. I'm feeling embarrassed now. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kelly, I need you to roll I... my psych for me. All right. Uh, so, I'm... am I rolling? Okay. Wait, who am I rolling first? Nicole or me? Well, Kelly, roll your body, and we'll we'll work our way through this. You know what? I have so many fucking things here. Uh, yeah. So dump out twenty of them. Well, I needed to get ones that weren't red. Fucking jeez. <laughs> fucking my favorite fascist is Josh. <laughs> Dice fascist. All right. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna be red and this uh this off white is going to be uh Nicole because she's quite tan well, I don't consider her white anymore. Well, uh, uh, based worry, on I, Ukrainian I, I've history, I'm more post on likely to support the whites at this point. Oh no! Okay, so I'm just really ready to pull Ukraine. Ukraine. Look, no one's a good person in the Russian Civil War. Let's let's face it here. <laughs> how, how did this become the conversation? Jesus. Okay. Because I'm so. I've been reading a lot about Ukraine since the war has been going on. Okay, well, I'm rolling my body and whatever Nicole's thing is. I'm plus two body. All right. Okay, so so I, got I see four. three out of four die here. Oh. Uh, we got I got eight. We're going to have to Ooh, work on okay. this scam. Is that okay. a crit? Can we crit fail in this system? or? Uh, you better believe I'm doing a crit fail. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry if I... <laughs> no, no, trust me. If I see snake eyes, that's... Chef's kiss levels of I can't wait. This is why so, I don't like playing with Josh because he pays attention and he won't like he doesn't just breeze by me doing things like rolling. Yeah, like 20s. lying about using a D twenty to get through that. Uh so um that's a psych roll for Dr. Gill of eight plus I think your psych is two. Oh no no no, my psych is minus one. I love it. Because mm -hmm. I'm that, a very bad psychologist. That checks out. So you have seven. Um, if Maldus and Harold could also roll psych rolls here. Yeah, I got five. Uh, you got five. I've, I got an, uh, uh, sorry, taking uh, modifiers into account two. Yeah, so. you got two. Okay. So, I forgot what my modifiers are, sorry. That's okay. Because this is going to get a one for you. Uh, for your psych, yes, negative one. Oh, I got zero. <laughs> what? what? How, well, how is that how? even possible? What? You, you would have the lowest score you could have rolled is two. Like, oh, no, sorry. I thought we were looking at like the character sheet. So I got yeah. five and then zero. Minus one. Five. Okay. Yeah. So that's four. Mm -hmm. Am I? No, I'm reading the wrong sheet right now. My God. Uh, yes, you have five. 
Yeah, I was like, am I? Do I have no, no, I'm just brain damaged. Uh, okay. We are no, same, well machine. legitimately, yeah. but. Um, so, uh, it's five and two and seven. All right, so, uh, Dr. Gill, as Ellen squats down, realizes this is a good time to get a w- look away. Unfortunately, both Maldus and Harold are drawn and look on in abject horror as it appears Ellen is appear- trying to lay an egg, but in the worst kind of biological mix-up, maybe some bad food the last day, they appear to be t- taking a shit on the president's lawn. <laughs> right in front oh, of you Oh, that's a all. relief. I was worried I was going to experience some kind of like octopus hole pre- prolapse, but this is much better. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you're Maldus has, a, squ- Maldus has <laughs> yeah. a squid fact. <laughs> and that's, yeah. Maldus is going to say the squid fact. Oh, uh, sepia ink is, <laughs> comes from squid ink. <laughs> and he just really? says that the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> just the whole time. Just <laughs> that's the one sepia <laughs> fact I know is that it used to be extracted from squid ink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, incredible. Mm. incredible. So, Maldus just repeats that while he cries and screams. And... <laughs> As this random person appears to be just taking a random squid appears to be just taking a shit right in front of him. <laughs> Upon he also fin- appreciates that Elon. <laughs> Ellen could be a good source of sepia ink. So, so you know, he, could, he makes a little mental note there. So, Ellen, upon finishing what you thought was an egg laying, you realize your mistake and do again to the utter failure. You are terminally embarrassed of what you have done right now. <laughs> oh, God, you guys, this is so... I thought it was going to be so funny and cool. I was going to lay an egg, and I was going to go egg him because he's kind of a fascist, and that's what you do. You hit him with an egg, and I just... Oh, I... I'm, I, I was here to help the team, and I really felt like I let the team down. I'm sorry, guys. I, 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 I'm going to go behind the building and, and, and change my power suit. It's all, it's all inked up. Uh, oh, boy. I should have I been the Brown Ranger. Or, oh, uh, no, wait. What, what color is my what? ink? Uh, uh, sepia is sort of like a dark brown. So mold, I should have been the Maldus Sepia Ranger. <laughs> well, uh, Mal- well, Ellen. Maldus... T- no, Sorry, no, no Maldus, you go first, because... You guys control the story, not me. So what is what is Maldus going to do in this situation? Uh, Maldus is looking for some kind of... He's going to take the empty shoe polished in of Burnt Umber and see if he can, <laughs> like, take some of the Burnt Umber. I don't know if you want to roll for that or not. Uh, Sorry, no, no, this, this, is, this is your unique talent, so you just you just go forward with it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he collects some... Do you want me to roll? <laughs> no, 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 you just... Okay, you yeah, say what's happening takes... right now. Oh, yes, another fun addition to my collection. Uh, <laughs> it just gets better every time. Yeah. I got Indian there for a second. No, no. Hindi, sorry, <laughs> my bad, sorry. No, yep, yep, stop, I'll stop. There we go. There's, there's, uh, there's a good move right there. So, whilst uh, Ellen is... So are you behind- saying whilst... Whilst. What do you want me to say? Whilst? Can we get? Can we take a vote on whether or not it's pronounced whether it's pronounced whilst or whilst? Or am I like the only one that thinks that it's whilst? I, I thought I it was just, whilst, but I thought it was I've heard it either thing. way. So I take the one that feels more natural to me, whilst. and I will not be attacked while I'm GMing a game. Whilst. You know what? Rocks fall. Doctor Gill dies. Whilst. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. He deserves to die. I just assumed it was a Canadian thing. I was just like, no, I just I mean, cannot keep up with the way Josh pronounces things. There's just so many. Uh, it's, no, not a, it's, not winning, it's not a winning. It's not a. It's not a winning uh, fight to go in. I will. If it's not a together. Japanese word, he does not also, know how to pronounce it. <laughs> also, I'm like, I'm a hardliner. If you understand what they're saying, then you're an asshole. If you correct them. Even though I'm silently judging the entire that, time. I mean, silently <laughs> judge. I mean, I was about to say, as a white straight man, anytime I, I'm proven to be wrong, I just triple down and pretend I'm not. <laughs> so <laughs> Verifiable by many people in this audience, in fact. Yeah, it's like when I tell Josh that the light in his hallway pointing at the camera is too bright and he goes out and gets brighter light bulbs for his hallway. <laughs> just, just every time. That's something I would do, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a petty bitch. What can I say? Yeah, me uh, too. But anyways, uh, while while Ellen <laughs> is off changing their power suit, 
You, Dr. Gill, if you could roll an understanding, please. Which means Kelly, that's you. Roll. That's you, big guy. <sighs> Kelly. I should just oh, grab yeah. my own dice. It would probably... It'd probably be faster at this point. Yeah. Oh, so I have well, a, fine. a fine. modifier just... of plus two. Plus two on understanding. Okay. Not well, yet. I can only see one of those, Kelly. All right. So 13. Hey, damn, damn near yes. Damn near I need crit. a V-shaped receptacle for Woo! these dice. So, Dr. Gill, <laughs> recalling his <laughs> elective <laughs> political <laughs> science class he took in uh, his... Uh, his his um, what what is that called in America? County College? I don't know. I don't know American. Community, Community college? college? Community College. I don't know American things. I try to make it a policy not to. Um, it's such so, a different exotic country. <laughs> you realize from your uh, elective political science course in Community College that if you kill the president with the strange libertarian laws of Atlantis, you actually become the president until the end of term. <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm gonna be even worse! <laughs> so, Dr. What? Gill realizes that he is now the president of Atlantis, and he can set a new governmental system. Because, Wait a boy, howdy, are politics bad? Wait a minute. We all kind of helped kill the president. Maldus wants to know who really, you know, who, since we who, all killed the president, should we not all be president this, now? Should this not be a Hunter situation? Oh, we're gonna have a Hunter going on here. I mean, I'm down with that. Do you because... really want Moldus to say Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Go on. I think we should make... I think we should make a Junta. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because you see more shoe polish hit him in the arse and the spear gun opens shoe polish and then Ellen did whatever the hell that was. <laughs> so I think we should become a Hunter. <laughs> Also, yeah, our junta is just a hunter Atlantis, when you're wearing jeans. I would like the real estate prices to stay stable, <laughs> so my negative gearing credits go I, up. I don't know what negative I, gearing. I, I hate how naturally you're falling into this. <laughs> it's it is becoming more South African as we go on. <laughs> And I'm really, I'm realizing I'm so racist towards white South Africans. You know what? <laughs> there, there are far worse people to be racist against than white yeah. South Africans. Are there? There's far um, worse. I've known a few South Africans. Most of them are lovely. Um, oh. One of them, however, one of them, however, did jujitsu with me and was like real intense. Okay. Would just like throw you I across think... the damn room. This is where I could tell that you're you were like richer than me growing up because all the white South Africans I've met are cunts. I played so, rugby oh, with yeah, one. Yeah. He was all right. Uh, he had no ears because of playing rugby so much. But <gasps> they don't they don't wear they don't wear scrum caps a lot of the time. Okay, it's kind of metal. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah he's okay. all right. He's good to drink with. I didn't get into his politics, so he could have been a piece of shit. This is like almost 10 years ago now. I love the apartheid. <laughs> oh, please, no. <laughs> no but why? as the new junta here, you guys get to establish what Atlantis does next. Are they going to rejoin the rest of the world? Or are they going to recede back into the ocean with stable property prices? Stable property prices, please. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I got an investment. I, I got a game plan for when the shoe polish industry eventually collapses. Whereas uh, me as Harold Hol Harold Holden, um, I want to spread the joy of the Holden Commodore um, <laughs> to the rest of the world. So I vote not going back under sea. Okay, so we've got one for, one against. Uh, we have our tiebreaker, Dr. Gil McCrawfish. Are Wait, you... How do we have one for, one against when there's three of them? Because Dr. Gil hasn't voted yet. Yeah, yeah, it's a tiebreaker, <clears throat> the decider. Oh, gosh, I just, I just want to go with what the group wants, so I think Dr. Gil should vote. Which is what was happening, because Ellen didn't actually do anything to kill the president, so... That's right, Ellen's I didn't. Part I, of the I, I don't really... The hunter. I had a whole <laughs> plan, it didn't work out, but that's okay. I'm just here to be part of the team. Uh, we could even call this the third triumvirate for, like, two Roman fans in the audience. <laughs> the tally red heads in the, in the crowd. Oh, yeah. Uh, so... Anyways, yeah, Dr. Gill. What does Dr. Gill want? 
So Dr. Gale says, as a good Southern man, I, I always uh, I always say you got to know when to hold in. So I'm going to go with Harold in this one. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'll concede. Amazing. I love that. So I'll concede on the condition I'll get to continue to milk this squid person here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah. to it now. Does the junta wish to vote on the fact that uh, Ellen will be subjected to indentured servitude to mold this Molu? Oh, well, yeah, let's, yeah, let's vote for that. I think I think I've made it clear I have no problem with indentured servitude. <laughs> <laughs> if, you've been, if you've been following the storyline at all, that's that is not a problem for me. I yeah, am. Doctor Gill has done some real fucked up shit an this entire story. Absolute storytime. monster. Oh no. <laughs> so uh, so yes. Yeah. Is Ellen Mollusk in a Dobby-like situation right now? Oh, God. Just waiting for that sock. No, I'm not like Dobby because I don't want a sock. I just love helping people. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, boy. Let's oh, boy, that your is agenda. Dobby. Jesus Christ. Let's Whoa. execute your agenda, Dr. Gill. What's, what did you... What is it, I think it's time for your first speech as the, uh, as the, as the new junta leader. What's, what are we going to do? <laughs> what's, what's the big plan? You know, I think as president, my first... Yep, there it is. <laughs> oh, I know what happened. What? 